Right, in this question we're asked to complete the table for what's known as a cubic. Now I know it's a cubic because x cubed is the biggest power, uh, or the largest power, sorry, of x. So here we go, they've drawn a table for us. There's a couple of nasty values in there, but fortunately they've given them to us. If they hadn't given them to us, you'd have a calculator anyway, so that's fine. Now, let's start filling this stuff in. and Don't be put off by the shape of this sort of axis here. These will be designed in your exam, okay, to fit the graph you're doing. So if you get a number that's miles outside of here, you know you've probably gone wrong and you'll have to go back and check it. Right, zero is the easiest one because we've got zero cubed is zero, zero squared is zero, zero is also zero, so that one is a zero. There we go. Let's have a go at one. One cubed is one. Take away three lots of one squared, well one squared is also one, so one take away three is uh, minus two, and then add two lots of one, well, we get zero again. Ah, now, am I spotting a pattern? Well, we'll see, I'm gonna check this one now. Two cubed, two times two times two, eight. All right, minus uh, two squared times three. So two squared is four times three is 12, so eight minus 12 is minus four, plus two lots of two. Oh. Okay, well, forget my pattern theory, that's not, not right in this case, but it's often worth, worth, sorry, looking for patterns, okay. Now, this is probably the nastiest one here, so I'm actually gonna do a little bit of workings just underneath here, um, because it might help me. Now, minus one cubed is minus one, okay? Take away, now, minus one squared, don't forget when you uh, square a negative number, you get a positive answer, so three dots of one, minus three, and then, two lots of negative one minus another two. So here we go, we should have minus six down there. And we've got a set of coordinates, no pattern in there, so that was a bit of a red herring by me, but there you go, always worth looking. Here we go, negative one, negative six, and so negative one, negative six, fantastic. That just fits on my axis. And then I know I've probably done it all right now. So zero, zero, the origin, there we go. And I'm gonna put across there. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, well there's 0 0.5. Now 0 0.3 is just above halfway between there. Uh, one, zero, oh, what's happening here? Maybe it's like that, you don't know. If you don't know what this looks like, make sure you plot all the points, don't guess, but it's often worth having a look to see if you can guess what you've got on. Um, so uh, 1.5 and negative 0 0.4, so 1.5, negative 0 0.4, which is about there. Okay, and then two zero. Ah, right, okay, so it doesn't go down there, it's gonna go like this. And again, because they're not in a straight line, hopefully you've noticed they're not in a straight line, draw these freehand. So, draw them as accurately as you can. You would get a little bit of leeway in an exam, but you're still supposed to be pretty close. Right, and there I go like that. Now, what you'll notice with a cubic is you always get that sort of squiggly shape, all right? So there we go. I know I've drawn that correctly. It is the right shape. Now, I'm asked to hence solve this. Now, what you might notice, actually, is that this bit, okay, appears right at the beginning, okay? Now, I've just got a bit tacked on the end. Now, I'm gonna actually rearrange that, okay? And I'm gonna put that on the other side so I can draw another graph. So, if I rearrange this, all right, because I've already got that graph, all right, drawn in orange here, and when I take that over to the other side, I get negative three. So I'm actually going to draw the line y equals minus three or negative three. Now, we should know that that is a horizontal line going through minus three on the y-axis. So there's the y equals minus three line. And I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna draw a line. That should be nice and straight. Right, it's just, a, just beyond, isn't it, to the left of minus uh, 0.5, so I reckon the solution to that would be x equals minus 0.6. So, there you go, make sure you draw the line freehand, rearrange so you get what you had originally on its own and then draw the graph of what's on the other side, see where they cross, bosh, done.
Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done. Well done.